Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of In Defense of the So-Called Negro Paganism Part 7. Important notice, it is not our intention to offend anyone with this video. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, be kind to all creatures. This is the true religion, Buddha. This video is not for entertainment. It's not for views. It's not for thumbs up or down. It is not a propaganda video. It is not for popularity. This video is for education and information purposes only. So here is how we will proceed. We will further debunk the alleged apology rendered by an unknown Ghanaian. Remember, it's important we do this because we notice that some of our brothers and sisters, especially the so-called Hebrew Israelites and people in the US, tend to believe those propaganda videos from the slave masters that distract them from seeing that the Negroes in Africa are still being slaughtered in their numbers till today. So we will then show that any apologies should be coming with restitution from the Arabs and the Europeans who captured and sold the Negroes, that is the Christians, Jews and Muslims. And then we will show that the Negroes' way of life is closer to the Bible, the Quran or Torah than Islam, Christianity or Judaism. And then we show that Islam, Christianity and Judaism are deception tools and never referencing the creator of heaven and earth. So let us reference Stanford's Compendium of Geography and Travel on Africa by Keith Johnston and it was published in 1884. We see the following. Speaking of the general character of the natives of the region of the West African coast, Mr. Monteiro says, the Negro is principally distinguished not so much by the presence of positively bad as by the absence of good qualities, and of feelings and emotions that we can hardly realize to be wanting in human nature. It is hardly correct to describe the Negro intellect as debased and sunken, but rather as belonging to an arrested stage. So from the opposite page, we see that the Negro knows not love, affection or jealousy. He has not the slightest idea of mercy, pity or compassion for suffering. He has no idea of a creator or of a future existence. Neither does he adore the sun nor any other object, idol or image. His whole belief is in evil spirits and in charms or fetishes. These fetishes can be employed for evil as well as to counteract the bad effect of other malign fetishes or spirits. So our interest here is in looking at how they describe the Negro character. Now remember, what they are doing and what they do and what they have been doing is to make sure that they demonize the Negroes, whereas the atrocities for which they are being demonized are being committed by non-Negroes. The Fulanese are not Negroes. They were Arabs during the slave trade. They captured and sold the Negroes. The Nigerian army today was the slave raiding army of the Sultan. They rebranded it Nigerian army when the slave trade came to an end. But today, the Negro is seen as someone who also sold himself. So the reason you see that when they kill the Negroes, there are portions of Africans rejoicing and happy that they have been killed. It's not because they don't know. It's because they are not the same people. This is for our so-called African-American brothers and sisters in the diaspora who believe somehow that a, no, a little known Ghanaian could be issuing an apology. Whereas the governments there have a lot of money and enough money to buy weapons from the slave masters, pass it on to the same people that captured and sold the Negroes to be murdering the Negroes in their numbers. Now tell us, a people that could kill hundred and something people in one go destroy an entire village we are talking of 2018 now and you say they do not have military background it's impossible there are people well trained 
in weapons use they come from the nigerian army as it were and they are being used for ethnic cleansing they are being used to massacre the negroes now the reason the western propaganda channels like the bbc the voa al jazeera cnn are telling you they are herders and farmers clashes is because they are working together when you hear gun control in the u.s have you ever had any of them say okay no more weapons to these people no the reason they are doing it is because many of you especially the people in the diaspora buy into their narrative and believe their nonsense because the negro has no idea of racial affinity the reason also we're bringing this is for you to go and read you need to know what your enemy or your opponent thinks about you before you can compete before you can checkmate any move he comes with we challenge you to please find time to read these materials yourself again remember this video is not for clicks or views it doesn't benefit us if you give us thumbs up or down or if you don't go and read the materials yourself so you understand what is going on let us reference a book called A Tropical Dependency, an outline of the ancient history of the Western Sudan with an account of the modern settlement of northern Nigeria by Flora L. Shaw, Lady Logard, and published 1905. We see what we mean by where the apologies should be coming from. When prisoners were captured, only women and the young were kept. Full-grown men were massacred. On one day, Dr. Bath reports, a large number of slaves had been caught this day. Altogether, they were said to have taken a thousand, and there were certainly not less than 500. To our utmost horror, not less than 170 full-grown men were mercilessly slaughtered in cold blood, the greater part of them being allowed to bleed to death a leg having been severed from the body now these people are still there alive and well today the nigerian army the Ghanaian army and all the armies that come from the nigerian army were the slave raiding army which did what you're seeing here but you are looking at them and then a nobody from ghana is rendering an apology and you are thinking it's a true apology coming from the wrong person, the people who couldn't have been behind the slave trade. Now, remember, the Pope also apologized in, 2000, in 1985 or thereabout. Your question should be, why are they rendering lip-based apologies, hypocritical apologies? Why can't they address the root cause? That should be your question. So, from the same book, I'm reading from the highlighted portion. It says, Under the Amphodio and Belo, the conquering armies of the Fulani were enjoined to spread the true faith and to convert the pagans to Islamism. At a later period, it was found more profitable to leave the pagans in a condition in which it was lawful to make slaves and to exact tribute and Fulani was degenerated into little more than slave raiding expeditions. Now, the Fulanis have not apologized, but you are listening to an, an unknown Ghanaian, probably paid or sponsored by the slave masters, to deceive you. Now, think about it. If Islam, Christianity, or Judaism was true to the Most High God, tell us what and what in their books they practice. You can see that the biggest prophet of Islam, called Danfodio, was a terrorist and a slave raider, capturing slaves and selling to the Christians. The weapons are provided by the Christians. You still can see the synergy. So let us move forward. Let us quickly reference Modern Geography, Volume 2, published in 1802, and we we'll see the following. These fullers, it is said, can bring into the field not less than 16,000 cavalry and being surrounded by 24 pagan nations or tribes, these Mohammedans never hesitate to make war for the sake of procuring slaves. And yet, these Mohammedans have not found time to render an apology for the slave trade. Yet, you are believing one man that you don't even know whether he was just paid by the slave masters to make that propaganda video. You are believing him and the so-called Hebrew Israelites are buying into it simply because it suggests that some people who were not uh, the same with the Negroes sold them. 
Now, our question to you is, if you're a Muslim or a Christian or a Hebrew Israelite or a Jew, because they are all the same thing, our question to you is, somebody like the Sultan of the Fulani, now called the Sultan of Sokoto, they tell you that he is the head of all Muslims in Africa or in the region, in the sub-region. Can you tell us when the election or the meeting was held and they appointed him and all the Muslims agreed to that effect? The reason he is the head is because they were the conquerors. They were the uh, the terrorists that invaded the place and converted the people to their strand of Islamism, which is not true and not anything to do with the most high creator of heaven and earth. And remember, our topic here is that the Negro way of life was in tune with the will of the most high than these things they call Abrahamic religions. Because the Negroes practiced what they preached. They lived according to the statutes and commandments of the Most High without having them written down as against these religions that have them written down but do not practice them. Two different things. But let us move forward. Let us also reference a book called The White Man in Nigeria by George Douglas Hazeldine and it was published in 1904. We see the following. We know that about a hundred years ago, the rough and ready intertribal man-catching was stopped by the founding of the Fulani dynasty by Ottoman Fodio, the first Fulani Sultan, which has lasted until now, organizing government, justice and revenue and protecting the people from the outside raiders of the coast who found a happy hunting ground there for black ivory. For a hundred years, this dynasty has been all-powerful. Even the Londoner had with interest from time to time of the alleged 20,000 breastplated cavalry men of Sokoto and of the chain armor of Kano. For a hundred years, all caravans have paid heavy toll on passing in and out of house land. And for a hundred years, even white men have paid subsidies to native chiefs for the right not to have their stores unreasonably plundered or their carriers caught for slaves too often. So you see how powerful the Fulanese were. It is that 20,000 breastplated cavalrymen and all that that metamorphosed into what you call Nigerian army today. It is also where the so-called Ghanaian army came from. Now, you may be doubting it, but you just have to go read and do your studies. Well, you will see where they even wrote it themselves. But at least we are giving you clues as to where the apology should be coming from. Not from a non-entity or some man somewhere ignorantly rendering you an apology. This message is for the, our brothers and sisters in the United States especially, and the so-called Hebrew Israelites. Why they are busy killing your kid and kin, they are rendering you apology in a video they created to deceive you and you still can't read between the lines. We need you to wake up. We need you to read better. We need you to analyze things better. Here we see how difficult it was to get the Fulanese to stop their slave raids. And it says, that night he had the papers telling him of the action of the High Commissioner in forgiving the old Emir of Contagora and sending him to live on parole at Yola. This was one of the Fulani rulers, a relative of the Sultan of Sokoto who had persisted in slave raiding and when the Sultan wrote him not to do so, sent back the answer, can a cat stop catching mice? When I die, it will be with a slave in my mouth. He had twice fought the Niger company and he had twice been beaten. So now you see, the same people that captured and sold you as slaves. That's the same people the slave masters are ensuring that you remain in the same country with. Now, stop listening to the Ghanaian saying he's rendering an apology. That is a slave master's propaganda video. That man and his ancestors have nothing to do with the slave raids. These are the people. The reason they protect them with their propaganda is because they don't want you to know. If you knew very well from childhood that Islam and Christianity were just for slave trade, and they make you better slaves or better slave catchers. They are just to divide people. Will you be following such a religion? So those are the reasons why we are doing this video so that our people can go and read, at least study the history of what they brought to you. Which language does the Most High speak? Does he speak English? Does he speak Arabic? If he spoke Arabic, 
it couldn't have been for you because there is no way the most high can speak to somebody in arabic and the person comes with terror violence and slavery to come and impose that message on you it doesn't work and it doesn't make sense so let us try to show you how proud the slave raiders slave hunters were at that time slave catching and slave raiding was like oil business today remember the oil, the crude oil they get from the Bight of Biafra replaced the slaves they were catching from there. And bear in mind that the slave forts were in Gori and in Ghana does not mean that the slaves came from Ghana. It does not at all, which we shall show you in subsequent editions where they wrote it themselves so that you understand it and then apply some deductive reasoning to what we're saying. So just like the army today, the slave hunters were very proud. It was a noble business at that time, but well, it was exclusive to the slave masters, which was the Fulanese. The slave masters, for you to understand how thriftless the Fulanese are, they would capture the slaves, go through the pains and terror because the Negroes defended themselves as much as they could, but they were overwhelmed by numbers because the Fulanese come in their thousands. Imagine, let's say, three or four thousand troops from the Nigerian army surrounding your community and setting the houses on fire and capturing people and killing the adults. That's how it was. So there was not much the Negroes could have done. So we want to show you how proud the slave hunters were at that time. But then for the Fulanese, because they are thriftless, they don't even understand anything. After the risk of raiding and all capturing and all that, they could give it away for free. And that's who they are. If you notice, you will see that why the Europeans bought the slaves and got them to be farming in their plantations and producing food for them. The Fulanese just derived joy from the murder and massacre of killing of innocent people. That's all. So you will see what we mean when we read further. So let us reference Barlow's Monthly Magazine, Volume 76, from July to December 1892. We see the following. During the winter of 1889, Major Cloud M. MacDonald made a very interesting journey by steamboat far up the Benue branch of the Niger River and then up its Skibi tributary in a steam launch approaching very near to the basin of the Shari River which empties into Lake Chad. So now the reason we read this portion is for you to know the location and remember from part 6 of this series that the slave hunter lived somewhere in the vicinity of Lake Chad and that the slave master always visits the slave hunter wherever he lived and that's the fool we talked about in part 5 of this series. So we move forward to show you what the slave hunters were like and how they were proud at that time. So here we see that the country around here was at one time the great cotton market of this part of the Niger Basin. It is now almost uninhabited west, the Mohammedans having desolated it during their slave raids and that's all we need. So we now go to where the slave hunter was conversing for weapons from the slave master so you understand how it works. So here we see where McDonald now met the much talked about Fubi Emirs. So it says at Loco, McDonald met one of the much talked about Fubi Emirs. Fubi is another name for Fulani, or provincial governors of the Western Sudan. He appeared on the bank surrounded by a mounted red news, and he himself was mounted on a small country bred horse. He was dressed in a voluminous tube handsomely embroidered with green silk, very baggy trousers and embroidered scarlet shoes. Much to the amusement of the people on the boat, he prepared to ride his horse along the plank stretching between the shore and the vessel. He and his steed would have fallen into the river if the white man had not sent him word that he would be pleased to see him without his horse. Now if you see some of their mistakes, some of their inadequacies are always placed squarely on the doorstep of the Negroes, whereas they are not Negroes. So you see how they put it here, subliminally suggesting that their stupidity was actually addressed by the white man, sending him words not to come in with his horse. Now remember, the Fulani are not Negroes. So whatever mistakes, whatever brutality, whatever terror you see from them shouldn't be attributed to all of us. 
so this is the reason why you see that the slave master is happy to adopt the so-called african-american nonsense which doesn't make sense and when you see those they pay like Omar Johnson or Professor Gates talking about African, you understand why they are doing it. The reason is to make sure that they tar everyone with the same brush, put those that know behind those that don't know and classify them based on those who do not know. Ideally what they are doing is whatever evil done by the non-Negroes, they put it squarely on the doorstep of the Negroes because they use the non-Negroes like the Fulanese. So let us see how this slave hunter is coming to negotiate for weapons to be used for slave raiding. So further down it says, after he came on board, he requested a private interview with the Queen's envoy. He said he and his people were not tillers of the soil. They did not dig the ground, neither did they batter ivory or palm oil like the merchants from Kano and the north. Unlike the white men, no, they were fighting people. They fought the pagans and made slaves of them. He had to send a tribute of 200 slaves to his master, the Sultan of Sokoto, so you understand where all this whole thing is coming from. So of the 200 slaves tribute he gave to his master, the Sultan of Sokoto, he said he had great difficulty in getting them. Now as MacDonald was all powerful, could he not, by authority of his queen, make the white traders sell him rifles and cartridges so that he might raid the tribes on the other side of the river and thus get what he wanted? Of course, this would be used only against the pagans and not against the white men. So you see why they keep telling you Africans sold other Africans. Clearly, he is telling you who they are going for and you notice that the slave hunters had no real interest. The Fulani, they benefit nothing from the whole project. If you notice, the Europeans will capture the slaves, put them in the plantations and use them as beasts of burden. What has the Fulani achieved with theirs? Nothing. So that is why they are always going to wherever they see the Fulanis, wherever they are. That's where they go. That's why you notice that the slave master, when he visits Nigeria, he heads to the house of the Fulanese. He heads to where the fool lives. So you understand where they, what their game is. So when they tell you this person is corrupt, this person is coming to fight corruption, if he is a Fulani, just know that that's what they are doing. They are just using them. You notice that the Fulanese have nothing to gain. Look at this slave raider. He is very proud that his people were not tillers of the ground. They were not um, butter, ivory or palm oil, that they were fighting people. They fought the pagans and made slaves of them. Now they gain nothing. They are just warriors. That's the thing. So you might be wondering why we are hammering on this. It's because they are still killing people there in sub-Saharan Africa today. And someone is sending us a video from Ghana of an apology made by a nobody. So you understand what we are saying. Now that we have seen how proud it was at that time to be a slave hunter and a slave raider, we also remember that when the Sultan wrote one of his brothers to stop slave raiding, the guy replied that you can't stop a cat from catching mouse and that when he died, he would be seen with a slave in his mouth. So we understand how it was and we can compare it today that the Nigerian army, army people are very proud too because the slave master understands the psyche of the Fulanese. They understand how to make people appear proud even in their nonsense. Remember, the army does not do anything useful. The army is just to murder people. But when you see them dressed in that borrowed robes and well-dressed iron shirts and all that, you will think there is anything about the army other than they are murderers, uniformed terrorists. That's what they are. If you doubt what we are saying, all we challenge you to do is to tell us the advantages of the army, the Nigerian army at least in the column here if you tell us they are protecting you from boko haram they are the boko haram the boko haram is from within them if you doubt what we are saying we have shown you the synergy between the muslims and christians which is the europeans and the arabs in muslims and christians you now remember that the fulanese do not manufacture weapons which you would have seen from this um, magazine here now that the man was baking for cartridges and ammunition to help him do slave raiding. So your question should now be, if Boko Haram is bombing people, how do they get the weapons? 
do not be deceived by the propaganda of the Muslims and Christians on BBC and all the places. They know where they meet, they know where they discuss, and they know how they supply them with the weapons. So what is happening is, it is two sides of the same coin. So when you think the army is protecting you, you need to tell us how somebody who has never gone on weapons training could massacre 100 and something people without casualties. And that is why you notice that the Nigerian government makes sure that non fulanese and the Negroes do not have weapons, which is the same thing they did during the slave trade, which we can also show you. By weapons here, we mean firearms. So they arm the army, arm the sleeper units, and it is those sleeper units that go to kill the people. So when you say Fulani headsmen, it is a unit of the Nigerian army. We can tell you that. If you doubt what we are saying, just explain to us how somebody who is untrained in military weapons use can go to a place and kill so many people and get away and nobody sees him. So this is the same thing they were doing during the slave trade that they are doing till today. And if you think it's not planned, tell us how the BBC, the VOA, Al Jazeera all come together to call it communal clashes. Call it hatsmen and, um, and the farmers clash, which it is not. The only thing they did was that allows them to make it look like it's ordinary, whereas it's a complete jihad. Remember, we showed you where they said Negroes must be made Muslims, otherwise they lose Christianity easily and go back to their original way of life. So now, the reason this video is being shown to you is so that you look at the Negroes' way of life and compare it with these two sham religions and you see which one has some power in it. So let us progress about negro so-called paganism so we can progress to look at the so-called negro paganism and we will see that it is in fact the truth and that it is a way of life it reverences the creator of heaven and earth and it offered the negroes protection and that it was ignorance that made the negroes accept the powerless religions of the slave masters and that the slave masters religion makes them vulnerable which we shall show you and let us move forward by referencing a book called the journal of negro history this is volume 2 the editor was kata g woodson and it was published in 1917 so we see the following so here we see from the highlighted portion that the chief not having a sufficient supply of slaves on hand to trade caused his big drums to be beaten and organized two bands of troops to execute a raid among the heathen tribes to the east and southwest. The raiding bands attacked only tribes with whom they were at war or who refused to adopt the Mohammedan religion. So our interest is who refused to adopt the Mohammedan religion or with whom they were at war with. So now those are the people they are captured and attacked for slaves. So let us now show you those they could not attack because they had no choice. Let's show you. So here we see from within the highlighted portion that Negroes from other tribes were not purchased because they were believed to have the power of causing a man to die of consumption by merely looking at him. The purchase of felatas or pregnant Negro women or Jews were strictly forbidden by the Sultan. The Sultan was the slave hunter, slave raider, the wholesale merchant for slaves. But our interest is those Negroes that could not be purchased because they were believed to have the power of causing a man to die of consumption by merely looking at him. So now, do you think they just woke up to see that? Do you think they had tried those Negroes and they couldn't catch those ones? This is why you see that it is the army that is raiding the shrines because they understand that that is where the power lies. That thing is not the shrine. That is the creator of heaven and earth. Remember in Exodus it says, make an altar of earth for me and I will come there and bless you. So now what is happening is the Europeans understood that if they can get the Negroes to start worshipping something that does not exist, that's the Europeans and Arabs anyway, they become vulnerable. They will lose the protection from the creator of heaven and earth. And that is exactly what they have done. If you doubt what we're saying, telling you, let us reference one or two materials. It is left for you to investigate further. Please also notice where it says that the purchase of felatas, that's Fulanese, or pregnant Negro women or Jews was strictly forbidden by the Sultan. 
So our interest is where it says the Jews and that should tell you by simple deductive reason that the Jews at that time were not the white people you see in Israel. Remember, this was published in 1919 but Israel came into existence in 1948. So that should tell you which one predates the other. Secondly, it should also tell you that Jews are just people who practiced Judaism as a religion and both Judaism and Christianity and of course Islam all came from the Kabbalah. They are not aware of life. They are just religions created by the Freemasons and Jesuits. They are not from the Most High. So if you are in them, that's the mystery religions of Babylon. They are all the same thing. So at least this should tell you that. And in subsequent editions, we'll show you clearly where they wrote it. It's not we saying where the books are saying it. So you understand why your prayers are not, are not answered because you are not praying to the creator of heaven and earth. You are actually praying to something created by the Europeans and Arabs as a deception. So, but let us move forward. So before we proceed with our defense of the so-called Negro paganism, we need to remind you that the Negroes had a way of life and not religion. And by way of life, we meant where they kept the laws and statutes of the most high without having them written down this is based on their own accounts as well so now we need to also show you that what you practice as religions christianity islam and judaism all came from the kabbalah from the same source and they are just for deception we will provide you with where they wrote it and the honors will be on you to do further research on what they are doing and then we compare them with the negro's way of life to see which one truly reverences the Most High. Remember, as we always said, the Most High did not write any book and did not say he wrote any book. So any book you have should not be a criteria to prove that you are following the Most High. Above all, if you checked the books you have and compared them with the actions of the religions you practice, you will see that they are totally at tangent. They are not the same. So let us reference morals and dogma of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Freemasonry prepared for the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree for the southern jurisdiction of the United States and published by its authority and the year was AM5632. Now AM5641 is 1881 so the honors is on you to calculate what AM5632 is. Now remember, the Freemasons own the church and the mosque and the synagogue you have today. So, but we need to reference some comments here that will enable you to find out what is going on and be able to compare what they are doing with what the Negro so-called paganism does. So, and here we see from the highlighted portion that masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism and alchemy, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages, or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled, to conceal the truth which it calls life from them and to draw them away from it. Truth is not for those who are unworthy or unable to receive it or would pervert it. So God himself incapacitates many men by color blindness to distinguish colors and leads the masses away from the highest truth, giving them the power to attain only so much of it as it is profitable to them to know. Every age has had a religion suited to its capacity. So we go further down and we'll see what it says as well. So we see from just below the highlighted portion where it says the teachers even of Christianity are in general the most ignorant of the true meaning of that which they teach. So this should tell you that if the owner of the religion you claim you practice is telling you something, you need to look inwards. You need to look further to find out what he is saying. So going further down, it says, So masonry jealously conceals its secrets and intentionally leads considered interpreters astray. Now, our question to you is, do you think the people being led astray are the Freemasons themselves or the Masons themselves or those that are not within their fold? 
That should be your question before we proceed. Because remember, both Islam, Christianity and Judaism came from the Kabbalah and they are all Freemasonic and Jesuit instruments, which you are at will to research and find out. Just research them, you will find out what we're saying. So now that we have shown you this, let us proceed a little further to show you that those things are deceptive. This thing, what he is talking about here, are the deceptions, the church, the mosque that you have. Remember, if it is the Muslims that captured and sold the Negroes as slaves to the Christians and Muslims themselves, but they were able to deceive you today to tell you that Islam forbids the slave trade, that should tell you how deceptive they are. There, you don't need to go any further to find out how deceptive these religions are. So now looking at your screen, we see either the Christians, the Muslims and the Jews represented together, carrying the gun made by the Christians and Jews and perhaps being used by the Muslims, which was how it was during the slave trade. So these same people come to you to tell you that the weapons they make to kill you are from God. While when you go to what they call shrine to go and seek for something that prevents their bullet from permeating your body is from the devil, then something must be wrong somewhere. Remember, Pike told you who should be deceived. Is it not foolishness that there is something that can protect you, whether real or imagined? But you are being told that that thing is of the devil, but the one that is killing you and can kill you and continues to kill you is from God. These are things you should go and think about. And that is the biggest justification we have for the so-called Negro Paganism. It can be Negro Paganism. That is the creator of heaven and earth, protecting his children. You can't work in one company and expect your salaries to come to another. You put your trust in the God created by the Europeans and Arabs and Allah with their guns to protect you. And then you are claiming and looking for the creator of heaven and earth who you are no longer reverencing or worshipping in these three religions to protect you. That is not correct and that is not sensible to say the least. So let us look at a portion of the Bible to show you what we are talking about. So from 1 Samuel 21, we see the following encounter between David and the chief priest concerning the showbread. And he says, And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, and David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there, but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. So why we brought you here is to see where it says keeping away from women. Now, if you were to do a little inquiry about the so-called fetish that protects people from bullets, you will hear something like when they go near women or what they shouldn't do with women and how it makes it renders it ineffective. So now, how come you see this in the Bible? So everything has a rule. The religions are lawless. Remember, before the coming of these religions, the people were able to abstain or stay away from their women when they were menstruating. But here we are today, the two religions come in and say, oh no, you don't need to do it. All they did was to usurp the place of the creator of heaven and earth because these laws were being kept by the people long before the Muslims and Christians came. And remember, we still tell you till tomorrow, the Most High never wrote any book. So that somebody has a book does not mean the person is following the creator of heaven and earth. It only means he wrote a book. That's all. So you see that these two religions work together. But let us move forward to show you why we strongly believe that the only reason these Muslims and Christians are, were fighting the so-called pagans is because that is the truth. 
that is where the power of the most high creator of heaven and earth resides because if you checked it very well the christians make the guns to kill people the muslims use the gun to kill people but the so-called pagans are now deceived to think that something that prevents them from being killed by the weapons made by these two religions is now of the devil a again we ask you what do you think the masons meant in that their deception that should tell you because there is no way you can tell us that something that allows you to be killed is coming from god as if he didn't spend time to create you as if he doesn't love you so you see the difference between what they are doing and what they are saying let us move forward so going back to the book we referenced earlier it tells us that the negro knows not love affection or jealousy he has not the slightest idea of mercy pity or compassion for suffering he has no idea of a creator or of a future existence neither does he adore the sun nor any other object idol or image his whole belief is in evil spirits and in charms or fetishes these fetishes can be employed for evil as well as to counteract the bad effect of other malign fetishes or spirits even the natives of portuguese angola who have received the idea of god or creator from the white men will not allow that the same power rules over both races but that the god of the white man is another and different from the god of the black man as one old negro that i was once again with expressed it your god taught you to make gunpowder and guns but ours never did every large town of the west coast has its fetish house under the care of a fetish man who is consulted in an all cases of sickness or death as also to work charms in favor of or against every imaginable thing no death is attributed to natural causes it is always ascribed to the person or animal having been fetished by some spirit or living person if the latter the supposed culprit is fined sold into slavery or executed or has to take casca a decoction of poisonous or whatever they are talking about but our interest to you here is according to them the negro does not know all this but the negro knows evil spirit and all they do is evil but then the same evil protects the bullets they made with their guns from entering or killing somebody and they are always fighting that shouldn't you ask yourself why will somebody bring you a religion after enslaving your ancestors after killing you manufacturing weapons and notice that when they put the fools they put in power in sub-saharan africa those ones use the money they could have used to feed the people to go and buy their weapons to come and start killing others so you should begin to ask yourself these basic questions but before we round up let us take one more look at something so you understand what they are doing let us reference freemasonry illustrated and published in 1916 and we see the following a double acting caricature of christ and christianity false religions must resemble the true in order to be counterfeits and the most fearful of all counterfeits are false atonements for sin we have seen how masonry destroys the law which is the framework of our father's house we shall see how it counterfeits the gospel so you can pause this look for the materials and study them yourself our question to you is do you think these masons or the jesuits target their members or you because we don't know what they do in the closet chances are that they could keep the laws keep the rules while deceiving the rest of us so if you're still going to church or a mosque or synagogue and you are a negro we challenge you to go and research where you are going we challenge you to find out why they do not talk about the original religion of, of the negroes now you might think this is just hearsay or what are they talking about read the history very well and here we come to the end of this edition of in defense of the so-called negro paganism part 7 we hope we have been able to enlighten you and provide you with some thought-provoking topics you could research on. We hope you will also find time to conduct your own research. 
we encourage you to look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. Remember, the best way to hide something from a black man is to write it down in a book. Do not allow that to be true in you. Thank you very much for listening. Peace.